Okay, so in the lead up to Huawei's next generation Mate flagship, welcome to the pinnacle of the current gen. Inside this box is the Huawei Mate 20X 5G, which is a souped up version of the Huawei Mate 20X, which in itself is already kind of like the ultimate version of the Huawei Mate 20. And you might not think it by looking at the specs alone, but this is such a category defying device that using it doesn't actually feel like using a phone at all. And it's actually faster than any Huawei mobile out there right now. Let me explain. Inside the box, as well as the phone, one of the first things you're going to notice is a clear plastic case. You get a USB-C cable, you get USB-C earphones, and instead of the standard 22.5 watt charger on the Mate 20X, on the 5G version, you get a 40 watt supercharger. And that is great, but something that's going to grab your attention far more than that are the sheer dimensions of the device. You might remember the day when a 5.3 inch screen was considered humongous at a time when most phones were closer to 4 inches. Well, picking this phone up for the first time reminded me of that exact same feeling. In an age where most smartphone screens are hovering around the 6 to 6.5 inch size, this is a 7.2 inch panel, and that difference is actually even more than it sounds. In terms of raw screen area, you're actually getting about 30% more display than even the plus sized variants of other flagships. It's a 1080p OLED display with support for high contrast HDR10 content, and this combination of quality and size literally makes people double take when they see it in public. And to make one thing clear, this thing is fantastic for gaming. It's running the same Kirin 980 chip and 8 gigs of RAM as the 2019 P30 Pro. It's got GPU Turbo on the software front, which can stabilize frame rates. And the 1080p resolution here is a good balance between being sharp enough and not being too demanding on the chip. Also, the Mate 20X has one of the most advanced cooling systems on a smartphone, period. It's got a vapor chamber, which you've probably heard of, quite a few phones have that. But now also, a graphene film on top of that. You might have actually heard of graphene already. It is the thinnest material known to man. It is about 200 times stronger than steel, but more importantly for this use case, it is incredibly conductive, which means it can take heat from the chip in the phone and transport it away very quickly. They call this the super cool technology. Now, one thing that the standard Mate 20X did incredibly was speakers. Like most flagship smartphones, you got a powerful bottom firing speaker down here, but then turning the device around, you'd get another one on top. On this 5G version here, you don't quite get two full speakers, and there's no headphone jack on this version either, as some extra room had to be used for that 5G. That said, this phone does still use the earpiece to create a dual speaker setup that's still loud and clear. And remember, you're also getting USB-C earphones in the box, so you don't need a dongle to use them. Anyways, what I found more interesting is that whilst using the Mate 20X 5G, it wasn't just a case that everything felt bigger than with other phones. This thing has finally crossed another line. You have to kind of commit to using it with both hands, but what that means is when you're forced into that, you start using the phone in a slightly different way, or at least that's what I experienced. There is so much space here that you could be playing a YouTube video whilst having a full screen's worth of Twitter feed left. It doesn't feel cramped at all. Whilst, yes, phone screens are getting larger every single year, and I'm sure it's only a matter of time before 7.2 inches becomes conventional, that doesn't change the fact that right now, there is nothing else like this. Add into this mix the M-Pen, which comes separately and doesn't fit inside the phone, but benefits from having the actual dimensions of a pen you're used to using. It's got impressive sensitivity, we're talking 4096 levels of pressure, which is as good as its fiercest competition. You get an action button, which is your primary way of triggering things, such as going straight into the notes app with one tap, or to take custom screenshots in any shape. Useful for sending that perfect meme without any distractions. Plus, of course, you can use it to draw, and I don't need to tell you that this is up there with the best phones to be doing that on. So yeah, I could talk about form factor for another four minutes, but essentially if you're in the market for a large screen phone, then this not only offers the screen size that you might want, but also helps you take advantage of it quite well. Anyways, the other differentiator here is that instead of just using the Kirin 980 chip, the Mate 20X 5G combines this with their new Balong 5000 chip, which handles communications. It's a multi-mode chip supporting 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G in a single unit, which reduces the latency and the power consumption when switching between those modes, and that's more important than it sounds. Because 5G is still an evolving standard, there's going to be a lot of this switching happening. You're not going to get 5G coverage 
coverage everywhere. I say that, but 5G is improving, and I actually spent a good part of last week in London testing 5G networks, and when it works, it is incredible. I tried downloading a whole load of smaller 50 megabyte applications, and that download is happening so quickly that I didn't even see a progress bar. Aside from this, I do like that Huawei has used a rear fingerprint scanner, because on a phone of this size, I reckon having one on the front would need a bit of a finger dance to get to. The body has an IP53 rating for mild splash and water resistance, and a strong 4200 mAh battery, which will mean you're still looking at a full day's use even with the huge display and 5G always active. On the back, you've actually got the same camera system as the Mate 20 Pro last year, so that's a primary 40 megapixel sensor, a 3 Times telephoto camera as well as an ultra wide. I wouldn't call this the number one camera system in the world anymore. In fact, you've got Huawei's P30 Pro, which is their current camera flagship, but this still has almost all of the same features. You still get all that fun stuff like portrait mode video and AI color, but also something I became a massive fan of after using the P30 Pro Star Trails mode. The camera capture time is also pretty amazing here. And finally, the phone supports Huawei NM cards on top of the 256 gigs of inbuilt storage. These things are about 45% smaller than a standard micro SD, and by being the exact shape of a nano SIM, you can fit one into your second slot on this dual SIM tray. The phone is running Android P, is going to be getting the Android Q update, as well as all other updates as normal. So to sum up, this feels like a smart first step into 5G. The Balong chip allows seamless switching into 4G or 3G if needed, and the massive screen and loudspeakers let you really enjoy whatever content you're consuming, whether that's a show that's being streamed on your 5G network or just a game being played natively. The Mate 20X 5G has actually just come to the UK now, so if you're from here, I'm going to drop some info in the description below as to where's the best place to buy it. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and I will catch you in the next one.